Well, students, again, um, once again, we are here uh, with a lecture on uh, physiology of lactation. And earlier we have discussed about uh, uh, the milk, what's that, where from it's being secreted from that mammary glands, how those anatomical structures of mammary glands, supporting structure of the mammary glands, the nerve, and then uh, the blood supply. Uh, lymph supply that's already discussed earlier in the first lecture of uh, our uh, this lactation or uh, or you can say the physiology of lactation. In the first lecture we have dealt with all that mammogenesis mostly in different stages of life, prenatal, then postnatal, in that prepubertal, pubertal, and that mammogenesis. We have already dis discussed about that. Then uh, comes to one more important, that's the functionality of the mammary glands, that's lactogenesis. So this lactogenesis, basically, we know that uh, uh, it uh, means when uh, this mammary gland that acquires the ability to secrete milk, we name that lactogenesis. So uh, the mammary gland is now able to uh, synthesize and then secrete the milk. That's a lactogenesis. So mammogenesis uh, that we have earlier discussed and we have discussed about different hormones that are influencing the growth of mammary glands and the ductal growth mostly uh, under the influence of estrogen and then alveolar growth mostly under the influence of progesterone and this whole growth of mammary glands um, I mean to say that uh, most of its uh, development is during the cyclicity, post-pubertal, uh, during the cycles when there is, a, uh, I mean, cyclicity, the estrogenic phase, and then you see luteal phase in, in those uh, cycle, uh, extra cycle, during that, the uh, ductal system and the alveolar system gets developed. But uh, you see, uh, to be uh, very clear, the final, these parts which develop into the alveoli, they may not probably appear or they may not uh, occur prior to the pregnancy. So in pregnancy itself, uh, the uh, mammary gland, basically it's those terminal uh, ends of those ducts, they become alveoli and alveoli then gain uh, the property or the functioning of secreting milk, synthesizing and secreting the milk. That's the lactogenesis. So that this lactogenesis basically sets in when there is pregnancy. So once pregnancy is established, the lactogenesis starts or it sets in and the alveolar cells, uh, which are mammary secreting cells, the epithelial cells of the alveoli, and they occur this ability to secrete milk. So lactogenesis, basically it happens in two stages, the stage first and the stage second. In stage first, we have a concept of limited structural and functional differentiation of the secretory epithelium during the last third of pregnancy. So uh, during the last third of the pregnancy, we find that most of the change uh, in those alveoli or those epithelial cells which are going to secrete milk uh, or the secretory epithelium of the mammary gland, it um, gets structurally changed and, of course, functionally differentiated to secrete the milk or to synthesize and secrete the milk. Whereas in case uh, set second, stage second, it involves the completion of this cellular differentiation during the immediate peripartial period that's coinciding with the onset of cupious milk synthesis and secretion. Means uh, stage second is almost done with the last means towards uh, the uh, delivery or towards the parturition. And then after parturition, the cupious milk synthesis and cupious milk secretion is there. And that's the stage second of this lactogenesis. Does this alterations in the activity of hormones or growth factors that modify the mammary gland during any of these phases can impact milk production? So all those, uh, since these are all uh, hormonally influenced, the whole physiology of this um, secretory epithelium that's governed by different hormones, 
uh, mostly those you can see and the progesterones, the estrogens, the corticosteroids, the growth hormones, and the, of course, in the stage second, prolactin is very, very important hormone. No true alveoli are evident until pregnancy, as already discussed. We, we find that true uh, alveoli means the functionally active alveoli, which are able to synthesize milk, they are evident only after the pregnancy has set in, and that too in the late pregnancy. Alveolar growth primary under the P4 means under the progesterone influence and majority of mammary tissue is adipose prior to pregnancy. We have already discussed in our earlier lecture that mammary gland is basically a tissue, uh, this fat pad or adipose pad in which there is uh, the see, set in those ducts. Uh, the sprouts are in a very early prenatal life, and then those sprouts ultimately uh, branch, rebranch, and make for uh, primary ducts, secondary duct system, tertiary duct system. Then those tertiary duct systems, then ultimately they are those typical buds, and they change to the alveoli. And those alveoli are sac-like structures lined with uh, epithelial cells, secretory epithelial cells, that occur uh, the uh, physiological function of secreting milk, what we name as lactogenesis. So we have seen that um, many experiments have been done and has been found that injections of pituitary extracts, uh, in case of the virgin rabbits, they uh, just started secreting milk. And subsequently, that uh, purified protein that was responsible for this milk secretion in virgin rabbits, that was uh, uh, known to be the prolactin. A prolactin which is a protein hormone, uh, big hormones, 195 or 96. I mean, it's a chain, a big chain uh, that's being produced by the uh, anterior pituitary. Uh, maybe under the influence of uh, um, that uh, hypothalamic MI and uh, what we also name as prolactin inhibiting factor. So, but uh, it's being produced by the anterior pituitary and this prolactin is said to be uh, uh, very, very important in the lactogenesis or in the milk synthesis of uh, this adult. So positive correlations have been seen between the milk yields following induction and concentration of PRL, I mean it's prolactin. So uh, it has been found that there is a positive correlation between the milk yields and this concentration of prolactins. Also prolactins along with glucocorticoids, they are the primary stimulators of mammary cell differentiation. So glucocorticoids as well as prolactin, a very, very important hormone, the lactation hormone, and we also name it as. So they are very important stimulators for mammary cell differentiation to make the, those epithelial cells to change into the milk separating cells, milk synthesizing cells. Both PRL and these glucocorticoids, uh, glucocorticoids, uh, this so got salt, and they are responsive. Their responsive elements are found within the promoter region of the genes for several mammary specific milk proteins. So that means these PRL and then glucocorticoids, they are also responsible for the synthesis of various uh, mammary specific milk proteins like the albumins, like globulins. Similarly, induction of both mRNA and specific milk proteins in response to addition of prolactin or glucocorticoids in isolated mammary epithelial cells confirm the importance of these hormones in lactogenesis. So experimentally, it has been so, uh, seen in, 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 you can say, the in vitro conditions that mammary epithelial cells, they responded to the uh, prolactin and the gonadotropins, uh, these um, glucocorticoids, and uh, uh, there was induction of mRNA for spastic milk uh, proteins that are being synthesized by epithelial cells or the mammary epithelial cells. Then uh, see, uh, in the lactogenesis, we'll see that uh, uh, mammary gland has a uh, physiological competence, in other words, you know, functional competence to produce, to synthesize 
and produce and uh, secrete the milk from these mammary uh, secretory cells. But to maintain that secretory functioning of these epithelial cells or these alveoli or the mammary gland, we name as galactophysis. Means the maintaining that synthesis and secretion of milk from these mammary glands, the term is galactophysis. And then, then glycopoietic effect of growth hormone or a bone bovine somatotropin is to increase milk production in lactating dairy cows is well known. So it is well established that growth hormone is very, very important for, uh, say, uh, galactopoietic effect or the maintenance of lactation from these mammary glands. So it has been observed that uh, after the ingestion of BST, bovine somatotropin, it may be a recombinant bovine somatotropin, milk secretion increases within a day and is maximized within a week. Elevated milk yield is maintained as long as treatment is continued, but quickly returned to the control levels when BST is discontinued. So it, uh, in other words, uh, it confirms that growth hormone or you can say bovine somatotropic hormone is very, very important in maintenance of this milk secretion from the mammary glands, or in other words, very, very important in the galactopoise system. If we see diagrammatically uh, from birth to, uh, say, uh, pregnancy, then parturition and the lactation, we find uh, from birth to puberty, the mammogenesis is there, and this uh, mammogenesis, uh, it takes, uh, say, uh, when it comes to the puberty, then it gets stimulated, uh, its growth increases uh, uh, because of the influence of that cycle city and the hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. Till, uh, say, uh, early uh, postnatal period or prepubertal period, you'll find that uh, the development in the mammary glands is that's the isometric, that's not elementary. But then it's elementary once the puberty cycle city comes in, it's elementary and there's a tremendous growth, in, particularly in the duct system, in the duct growth in these mammary glands under the influence of estrogen and the progesterone. So once there is puberty is there and now animal is cycling and then it gets conceived. So once it gets conceived and it comes into the pregnancy, you find that this alveolar and lobular growth is taking lead and there is a tremendous increase in the lobular alveolar growth of mammary glands. And then once it reaches towards the terminal end of this pregnancy, or you can say the later stages of pregnancy or the last trimester of the pregnancy, the lactogenesis takes in, that's the initiation of lactation. That means those cells now, the alveoli that has already developed, during the pregnancy and they now acquire the physiological competence, they acquire secretory competence to produce milk. And that's what we name as lactogenesis. And that will be the stage first. And then once there is pregnancy, it is parturition, there has been birth. And then there's a lact lactation, that second stage of lactogenesis. There's a cupious secretion of milk from mammary glands. That's a lactation. And this lactation will go uh, till the animal goes dry up, it comes to the stage when it's a drying. And this whole uh, from parturition or from delivery of, uh, say, baby to the uh, dry period, you will see this is a lactation cycle. And during this period, the animal produces the milk and uh, the whole that milk production of animal will depend upon this period, how you manage it, how you practice the different I mean, practices in the forms to maintain good quantity of milk secretion from mammary glands during this lactation period. And then uh, there is drying up and uh, once the animal dries up, it means uh, it's not going to now uh, producing the milk and prepares the mammary gland for next lactation, for next lactation, because we see that once it is a parturition over here, then there is uh, again the cycle T comes within say 30 days, uh, I, I mean 60 to 80 days after parturition, 
you'll find uh, the cyclicity coming again. And if you are, I mean, that management of the form is very nice, that you breed this animal again between that 60 to 80 days after parturition. And then you will find that by the end, it becomes dry. And within the year, you'll find one more lactation or you'll find that there is again parturition and animal starts lactating. So that's the actually what we name as a lactation cycle from one pregnancy to the other pregnancy or from one um, or parturition to the other parturition. Uh, that period between which will come past everything uh, means the pregnancy, then it's lactogenesis stage first, then parturition and then lactation or you can say the lactation period and then dry up uh, or dry off and then uh, again, uh, see, uh, parturition and animal starts the next cycle of lactation. So that's how uh, this uh, lactation uh, cycle is there. So it starts with the parturition and ends with the next, or uh, ends with the dry off and then starts again with the next, uh, see, um, this uh, parturition, next birth. So this is how uh, this uh, uh, lactogenesis and then galactopoiesis you find here. The galactopoiesis is in lactation, the uh, pure true lactation when animal produces milk. In that you need this galactopoiesis means this maintenance of secretion of this milk during this period. And, and that will all the galactopoiesis will depend upon how you manage the animal nutritionally, uh, how you feed the animal, how you take care of the nutritional needs of the animal. And of course, it is genesis, genetics and all that. They also take, uh, they also govern this uh, lactation curve. We'll be discussing about lactation curves and their persistency. And that's how uh, this galactopoiesis is uh, very important in maintaining the lactation or in maintaining the secretion of milk from the mammary glands once there is, uh, say, uh, parturition till the animal dries up. <clears throat> so this lactation we name, once the parturition has approached, the secretion of milk gets initiated and at parturition, cutest milk is secreted. We name this as a lactation. So animal is now lactating. It's in, uh, in a position to secrete the milk. It is in a position to produce the milk. Lactogenesis was, again, it, that lactation is one of the part of this uh, lactogenesis. Lactogenesis is that it uh, gets that capacity, capability, mammary glands, they become capable of, they become, say, uh, able to secrete the milk. And once the animal gives birth to the baby, there is a secretion of milk which continues for a certain period of time and that period we name as lactation. So peak yield in lactation, you find once there has been a birth and there has been a uh, lactation has started now and the peak yield of that milk you will get between 8 to 10 weeks and then decreases gradually until the end of lactation. So the lactation is under the influence of hormones like prolactin, growth hormone, glucocorticoids, insulin, and thyroid and parathyroid, parathyroid hormones. So these are the few very important hormones which are very much important in this lactation production of milk. We discussed already that prolactin is a very, very important growth, growth hormone. Again, a very, very important in the galactopoiesis. Then glucocorticoids, insulin, thyroids, parathyroids. They are all metabolic hormones. So uh, they take care of this milk secretion. Or in other words, responsible for lactation or the maintenance of the lactation. In lactation cycle, uh, that's uh, when the milk starts, uh, animal starts producing the milk, secreting the milk to the man, 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 this once animal dries off. So lactation cycle, milk secretion depends on the number of milk secreting cells, activity of alveolar cells, 
turnover of alveolar cells. So that lactation cycle, or in other words, you can say the milk production, milk yield will depend upon the uh, number of milk secreting cells, how many cells, epithelial memory cells are there, milk memory, these milk secreting cells are there, their number, more is their number, more milk will be produced there, their activity, uh, the biological activity, how active these cells are, how actively uh, they are producing those uh, milk or milk constituents, then turnover of these alveolar cells or these milk secreting cells. Uh, since you know cells are there, they do die and they get also replenished. So they uh, that turnover uh, it will uh, if it is turnover is very good there. So you will expect good uh, milk production from an animal. So it will depend upon the turnover of these alveolar cells also. Normally, you will find that 3% of the mammary cells proliferate in 24 hours period. So regulation of mammary cell renewal provides a key to the increasing persistency. Means how long this animal uh, produces milk or how, uh, say, it's a ratio of decreasing from peak to the dry off, we name that as persistence. Similarly, as you find now in a lactation, lactation cycle is the period from onset of lactation after calving until the calves milk dries up or up to the dry period. So that is actually lactation cycle. Some will uh, you'll find in some cases they take this lactation cycle a period from calving to the next calving, from one calving to the next calving, including the dry period in it. But some it say that lactation cycle is only that um, for onset of uh, lactation, onset of milk pro production to the dry off when the animal dries uh, or is not able to produce now the milk. So this cycle has been split in four uh, say uh, phases as a cycle, as a period, lactation period, only three. As a cycle, you can have early uh, uh, say lactation, uh, this early period, early lactation, mid lactation, late lactation, then of course dry period. So early lactation will be some 14 to 100 days, mid lactation from 100 to 200 days, uh, and then late lactation, that's from 200 to 305 days. In normally we take a lactation cycle length as 305 days. Mm -hmm. So 305 days in modern dairy cows, uh, we take this as uh, uh, the standard 305 days of a lactation cycle. That means the animal produces milk after parturition up to 305 days. And um, taking that, uh, maintaining that with the uh, pregnancy during, uh, say, 60 to 80 days of parturition, and then preparing the animal uh, for next calving within one year. That's a very good policy that you have one year, one cough. One year, one cough, that's a very economical, uh, you say, managemental uh, practices in dairy farms. But you will expect one cough uh, every year. In other words, you'll get a lactation uh, every year, a good period of lactation of 305 days. Then, of course, there is dry period, which lasts some 65 days. Uh, it's very important that you have the animal uh, to go under this dry period, uh, or you dry off the animal. Uh, you don't uh, say take the milk from the animal. You don't uh, say you can say milk the animal. In other words, during last uh, say two months, sixty or seventy days, uh, that's uh, ideal. Less than it has been observed that less than forty days dry out, dry off uh, will decrease the milk production. And also, uh, uh, in milk production in next, I mean, uh, lactation. And if it is more than, say, uh, 80 days or 70 days, 90 days, that is, uh, it's uh, not economically good because uh, you won't get milk for uh, at least 305 days. So your milk production get reduced in the, uh, see, uh, the present uh, lactation cycle. There are a number of changes occur in the cow as they progress through different stages of lactation. Of course, during these uh, periods, during these stages, the early, middle, late, and dry period, 
uh, there are number of changes occurring uh, in the mammary glands. In the early lactation, you'll find that cows usually use their own body condition for about 12 weeks after calving over and above the energy they consume. So in the uh, early lactation, the animal, the cows, uh, the bovines are generally uh, in a, say, negative energy balance. They utilize their own uh, fat, they utilize their own resources and uh, produce a good quantity of energy to get compensated with the milk production or to increase, to maximize the milk production. They utilize their own resources, they utilize the animal, utilize its own resources. And uh, it doesn't uh, take much of the time matter during this period. You know, uh, in the early lactation, animal is not able to take, uh, say, um, enough, uh, say, food and feed, uh, because already its human has or human, uh, human size as well as papilla uh, because of its pregnancy it has uh, rather uh, say, reduced in size so it takes some time to um, uh, come to its original uh, size and capacity to consume more uh, I mean bulk of feeds and fodders so uh, therefore in early lactation they utilize they mobilize their own energy mobilize their own body fat and then makes that available for milk production. That energy gets uh, then converted into the milk production. So that's in the early lactation. So energy released is used to produce milk, allowing them to achieve higher peak productions in the early lactation. To do this, cows must have, you see, definitely if they have to lose uh, their body condition, uh, or to maintain a good uh, milk production. Of course, they must have that uh, stored with it. They must have their body resources. They must have a good uh, body condition uh, before parturition so that that uh, body condition score is being uh, utilized for uh, maximizing the product in this milk production during early uh, life. So uh, it's therefore, it must have put that um, uh, she, uh, resources, energy resources, late in the previous lactation or during the dry period. Feed intake is lagging during this early, I just talked to you, I just mentioned that the feed intake is reduced and cows are usually losing weight during early lactation. At the end of early lactation, peak dry matter will be achieved and no weight loss occur. So after this uh, in uh, say early lactation, towards end of this early lactation or towards uh, the initiation of mid lactation, we'll find that animals are now able to take a good quantity of dry matter and there is also no loss of weight now occurring. So in mid lactation, you'll find that cows will achieve peak production eight to 10 weeks after calving, their peak dry matter intake will be also there. They will take good enough quantity of dry matter and there'll be no loss of weight. And uh, the cows should reach maximum dry matter intake no later than 10 weeks after the calving with at least 4% of their body weight. So 4% of body weight, uh, dry matter, 4% of their body weight should be consumed as a dry matter by these animal stores the late uh, um, this early lactation or and uh, mid lactation so target during this uh, target during uh, this period is to maintain peak milk production as long as possible so uh, it will be uh, the strategy to uh, say maintain that peak production as long as possible to achieve more yield milk yield. For each extra kg of milk at a peak production, the average cow will produce 200-225 kgs more milk for the entire lactation. So it has been, uh, say there is a common one uh, thumb rule that in peak lactation, if you are able to increase one kg, you multiply it by 200, that means it will increase 200 kgs of milk or whole of its lactational cycle or for its what you name as 
selectation of parent, it will produce more. If you want only one kg extra milk is in a peak production. Then during this period, the cow production should be bred to initiate a new pregnancy. 67 days after calving that I have already discussed that in a very good forms, in a well and managed, managed uh, say, uh, uh, in well managed forms, cattle forms, uh, there should be a strategy that that animal is pregnant or it is being bred, it's being inseminated, it's being served uh, and after uh, say 60 to 70 days after calving within a 60 to 70 days of coming. Coming to the late lactation then, so it begins 200 days to 305 days, again 100 days of this lactation. So after coming and ends when cows dries off. So late lactation will end with the dry off period. So during this period, milk yield continues to decline. During this late lactation now, there is a gradual decrease in the milk production and ultimately it ceases to produce what we name as dry off and the cow also gains weight during this period to replenish the adipose tissue lost during the early lactation so a cow also now uh, takes a good quantity of feed and fodder and then it also uh, say uh, you can say it fulfills all those stores all those resources, replenish all those resources which have been depleted, which have been utilized during the early lactation and that energy resources of the body, they are being replenished, they are being, let's say, replenished during this late lactation. So two major factors that determine total lactation of yield. So there are two, if you are, uh, say, very important thing is in, uh, say, uh, understanding uh, these lactational periods, the uh, early lactation, mid lactation, and then late lactation. And uh, you can have those strategies where you can increase the milk production in the animal if you have uh, a good strategy to intervene during these periods, whether nutritionally or uh, say management. So two main uh, those major factors that are determining the total lactation yield are the peak lactation and the rate of decline from this peak. So I discussed earlier that if peak lactation is increased only one kg, it will increase 200 kgs of milk throughout its uh, lactational cycle. And similarly, if you are reducing the rate of decline from the peak, what we name as persistency, if you are able to decrease that decline, if there is no sharp decrease after a peak lactation, uh, then you are, of course, gaining uh, economically. You are uh, on a positive side. You are uh, harvesting a good milk yield for such animals. So for a typical modern dairy cow, lactational length is defined as 305 days. And this period reflects dairy management practices designed to have animals concurrently pregnant and reinitiating lactation approximately every year. That should be the strategy. And first lactation cow should reach 75% or greater peak milk levels compared to the peak milk levels of mature cows in the herd. So the cows which are first time calving, so their peak lactation in their first lactation should almost reach to the 75%. So of that, what we have mature cows in that herd. If in a herd of cows which are mature, there in the form, it's 20 kg peak lactation. Then a cow, which is first time calving, its peak lactation should be 75% means at least 15 kgs of milk. So uh, you'll find uh, here, see uh, the different stages, the early lactation, mid lactation, late lactation, and then dry period. You'll find in the early lactation, if you go with this milk curve, it peaks during uh, this early lactation towards say uh, this uh, four, let's see, towards second month, uh, see between this, in the second month, it peaks here and then it almost tries to decrease towards the dry period, right? But initially you will find dry matter is very little. Milk production will increase, it will utilize its own body resources for making this milk to get produced uh, or this, peak production during this period, but 
at the cost of its own resources and the body weight gets decreased, Dr drastic decrease in the body weight because its body resources are being used to maintain this increase in the milk production. And initially this, uh, I would say dry matter increases not so much, but uh, gradually it takes up. And during this mid lactation, there's a peak dry matter, uh, I say intake, and uh, should reach 4% of the body weight as already discussed. Then this goes on with the milky yield. Milky yield also decreases, so dry matter intake also decreases uh, subsequently. But towards the dry period, you'll find that it should get increased. And then uh, at the same time, the body uh, score, the body weight, the body condition that has deteriorated during the early lactation that tries to get improved and it gets improved in late lactation and towards the dry period, making this again now available to get, uh, say, utilized, to get mobilized during the early lactation, that is the next lactation. So lactation curve, if we discuss about the lactation curves, so that is, represents the evolution over time of a herd milling, producing during a specific lactation cycle. So lactation curves generally reach their peak yield after calving and then decreases steadily from then until drying up. That we have seen that there's a graph that decreases continuously after it has attained the peak. And that peak milk sets the lactation curve for cows and should occur 60 to 100 days after calving. And this peak milk basically sets the lactation curve because the, if you simply add a divide, it is a multiply peak, um, uh, uh, say peak production with 200, uh, it will give you the uh, milk yield per lactation. So lactation curve allows the evaluation of important milk production characteristics such as maximum production and persistency. These curves can also help in the herd management, particularly in assessing the cattle herd's nutritional and health status. These curves are also useful in predicting a cattle herd's total milk yield when only early lactation cycle observations are known. As I told you, peak lactation multiplied by 200, it will give you a total milk yield. Areas for possible improvement can be quickly identified, leading to management ch change aimed at increasing profitability. In temperate dairy, uh, so uh, systems total milk yield for 300 day lactations can be estimated by multiplying peak yield by 200. Milk yield in pigs and rodents increases over time such that greatest output is realized at a weaning after three weeks. Since in these animals, the uh, babies are weaned, they are taken away from the mother. Uh, so the peak is over the time, it increases over the time. Uh, and whereas in case the humans and guinea pigs and rabbits, the peak of yield is about halfway through the typical lactation. Whereas in case of the bovines, we have discussed that peak is in uh, between 60 days to 70 days, or you can say uh, between 60 to uh, say uh, 100 days, it should come. These changes are presumed to reflect changes in cell activity as well as balance between any change in the cell number due to cell proliferation, this proliferation and death. So this will depend upon that turnover, which I have discussed, you know, how is the turnover of these milk secreting cells. And then multiple statistical models have been used to describe the lactation of curves. Typically in a dairy cow, the curve has first phase, rapid increase in the milk production until the maximum or peak production, which we have seen the time at which the peak occurs that is followed by second phase 